Welcome to our video. What the sentencing of Vladimir Kara Mirza says about the state of the opposition in Putin's Russia. CNN's John Voss talks to Russian affairs contributor Jill Doherty about the 25 year sentence handed down to Vladimir Kara Mirza. The Kremlin critic charged with treason after he condemned the war in Ukraine. CNN Russian affairs contributor Jill Doherty is with us now. Jill's the former CNN Moscow bureau chief. She's also an adjunct professor at Georgetown University. It's good to see you. Hey, John. So this sentence, 25 years in a penal colony, it's for statements like this one he made to CNN last year. Here he is. There are absolutely no limits to what Vladimir Putin can do. I think the world is seeing this loud and clear now as, you know, as, as we're witnessing this large-scale land war, this large-scale war crime happening right at the heart of Europe. So given Karl Musa's poor health combined with you know, the appalling conditions he'll be living in, uh, this seems like a death sentence. Well, you know, his lawyers uh, believe that, that it could be. And indeed, I mean, he actually was very uh, damaged because of two alleged uh, poisonings by the government. Um, and, you know, his health is not good. And this is, it was pointed out in court, this is really a strict sentence and it can be very, very bad for his health. And this is the toughest sentence handed out since the war began in Ukraine. So clearly there is a message here to everyone in Russia. Don't speak out, not just against the war, but just don't be critical of anything. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, because, you know, if you look at what he's accused of or actually found guilty of, apparently, uh, it would be a treason discrediting the special military operation, the armed forces and belonging to an undesirable organization. And any of these laws can be interpreted in various ways so that almost no matter what you do, although he was very overt, is definitely against the Putin government. There, but, but no matter what you do, it's very easy to, to uh, go afoul of these laws and then end up being arrested. And, and before the sentencing, he made a final address to the court last week, and he, he likened the current climate in Russia to the Stalin years. And, and these are incredibly defiant words. Here's part of what he said. I subscribe to every word that I have spoken and every word of which I have been accused by this court. I blame myself for only one thing that over the years of my political activity, I have not managed to convince enough of my compatriots and enough politicians in the democratic countries of the danger that the current regime in the Kremlin poses for Russia and for the world. I also know that the day will come when the darkness over our country will dissipate from this realization, from this reflection, the long, difficult but vital path towards the recovery and restoration of Russia, its return to the community of civilized countries will begin. I mean, those words are just incredibly defiant. So how did that play into this sentencing here for 25 years? Well, uh, I don't I don't think that um, I think the, the problem here is that he went back. He went back like Navalny because he believes that he has to be there in Russia. And unfortunately, in order to, as he said, convince his fellow Russians, it's going to take something, you know, very brave like this. And that may not even do it. So I think, you know, he's he's in in the line of dissidents and people who have really put their lives on the line. You know, his father was a very famous uh, journalist who also uh, was shut down and TV. I was there when that happened, shut down by the government at the very beginning of Putin's administration. So, you know, th this is it goes back quite a while. He's a tough guy. And just over a decade ago, he was part of the Maginsky Act, which was basically uh, allowing U.S. sanctions to be placed on Russian individuals, what, for corruption, for human rights abuses. And this judge hearing this case had been sanctioned by the U.S. Is that right? Yes. Unbelievable in a way. I mean, in most countries, I think the judge would have to recuse themselves with themselves, but uh, they didn't. So the judge actually, you know, uh, having sanctions leveled against them is uh, uh, in charge of the trial against Vladimir Katamoroza. So it's, it's, you almost couldn't make this up, but it is, it is a terrible irony. And I think that that is the thing, the fact that Katamoroza really pushed for Magnitsky was probably one of the more serious things, the threat that the government really felt, that Putin's regime really felt from him. At this trial, at the sentencing, there, you know, obviously there was a lot of foreign press that were not allowed into the courtroom. They said it was too full. But there were a lot of international diplomats who turned up as well. Uh, what does that say about all of this? 
Well, all of them believe that it's it's a travesty. But um, you know what what can they do at this point? This is the Russian justice system in quotes, which is going to do what is necessary to keep the government in power and to suppress any type of criticism. So I think the world community can talk about this, but uh, right now they're facing real difficulties in terms of changing anything domestically. Yeah, it does seem to be Putin has an iron grip over everything right now. I wonder how long that iron grip's going to hold for, though. If you look at Vladimir Karamurza, his, his own life right now is on the line, and what he's hoping is that bravery will change the minds of his fellow citizens. And that's a big question mark. Yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, ask Alexei Novani how that's working out, I guess, for, for, for him. Um, Jill, thank you so much for being with us.